gather together for worship this day as we come together to give our thanks and praise to the Lord our God. We do continue to pray for all those who are listed in your bulletin. Um, prayers for Dorothy Kafala. She's in the hospital again, needs to have another toe amputated and has a, another infection, so please do keep her in your prayers. And we also give thanks and remember the life of Patricia McClowski, Maureen Sergio's aunt, correct? Yeah. She was 100 years old, so we do give thanks for her life. And this is our, also Martin Luther King weekend, and we do uh, remember and give thanks for his life and witness. Is there anyone else that we should be especially mindful of in this morning's so worship? Yes. Chris. Chris. Yes. Mackenzie. Mackenzie. Huh? Another procedure this week. As always, I invite those who are joining us online to add any other prayers to the feed and to also let us know you're worshiping with us this morning uh, by liking or commenting on our feed. I would invite everyone to stand as we come together into God's presence. <clears throat> come and listen. What are we here? Stories of how God works. In the darkness of the earth. In people whose methods surprise us, listen again. Claimed and called by God, we do humbly come to offer up all those ways that we have not lived into the covenant of our baptisms. Your good news, O oh God, is so precious to us. And we confess that sometimes we treat it like this fragile, rare, and then we for you. All the while you are out scattering good news everywhere. With no thought as to whether the recipients are worthy or ready. Forgive us, extravagant God, for our tendency to judge what communities deserve your grace. And we can say to you, Lord, Forgive us, God, of abundant life. Forgive us, Creator God. Turn us aside from the empire's insistence on efficiency and productivity and control. Friends, God has come near. Though the kingdom may still seem far off, the truth is that in Christ, God comes to us in order that we too might know ourselves close to God. Hear and believe the good news. The time is fulfilled. God is with us so that we may be with God. Let your life reflect this forgiveness revealed through the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's join in our opening hymn.
the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Sunday school lunch, right? Maybe get a little more awake from Mrs. Bob Lanza. Maybe, yeah. Right. So sometimes Jesus was telling stories. So what what stories or kinds of stories are your favorites? Do you have books that you like to read or stories you like to read? Um, None. I have a lot. You have a lot. What's the last book you read? Um, I don't okay. <laughs> last book. Huh? The last kids on earth. The last kid on earth? Yeah. The last kids. Kids on earth. Wow. Is, is the what? The Bible. Okay. Anyone else? Any books that you like? Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Have you been watching it on TV too? I have. I just remember I haven't watched this week. So we only watched one of the shows. You only watch one of them? What else? I read Percy You read Percy Jackson too? Yeah, you like those? those are, I don't like You don't like them? So sometimes, some of us like some kind of stories and others like other kinds of stories. That's what makes books so fun because it's all different kinds of, what? The imaginary part that I You're just finishing the second movie? Yeah. So sometimes yeah, they make they make the books into movies and stuff too, right? So Jesus told a lot of stories, and sometimes some of the stories he, he told were parables. Did you hear that word before? A parable. It's kind of a weird word. It sounds like parable. No, it's not a terrible, it's a parable. It's a 
So what parables is, Jesus used like a, a, a thing that people would know. So sometimes it was a story about somebody who had a hundred sheep. So he was, he was telling that to shepherds. Now we don't have any shepherds here, right? No shepherds here today? Yeah. Wait, we do. Well, yeah, yeah. there, but real shepherds who are doing it today, right? And sometimes he told about fishing, right? It's for, for fishermen. And today, and today he, told, he tells a story about planting seeds. Now, any of you guys, this is the wrong time of year for this story because it's too old here. All right, but do you guys plant? We plant that, right? Except that was fake. <laughs> but somebody planted all these poinsettias. I like planting. So, so Jesus tells a story about planting. So, what are if you needed to plant a seed? What are some things you need to do in order for it to have to grow? Water. Water. What else? Sun. Sun. What else? Company. Company, all right, so you can talk to it. What else? Soil. soil, good soil, right? So you need to like dig a hole. What else? Wind, Wind all right, all right, to get all the other stuff out of the way. What else? Um, Maybe you have to weed around it so oh, other I things don't happen. You have to know how to garden. You have to know how to garden. You don't want to come see my gardens because <laughs> they're mostly weeds, right? But so you need to dig a hole, you need to water it. You to make sure it's enough sun, right? And all the weeds are there. Yeah, but Jesus awesome. tells a story today about where the farmer just kind of throws the seeds out there wherever they went. That doesn't seem like a very good way to get things to grow, right? But what he was telling us was that God throws God's love out there. He doesn't plant it carefully. He just throws God's love out there so that everybody can receive it, whether they're in good soil or not, whether they're going through a hard time or not, but that God's love is thrown out there for everywhere. So God's like the farmer who just throws it everywhere. He isn't always careful. Some of it lands so, on good seed. So he just takes a handful of seed. Yep, just throws it. Just throws it over there and then it, it just lands on. everywhere. And See, gardeners would tell you, Mr. Rudolph this has really good gardens, and he would tell you that's not the way to garden, <laughs> right? But that's what God does. So we have a new song, because we're in the season of Epiphany, which is about the Magi, the wise men following the star. So that, well, the Christmas tree will be coming down hopefully today. So folks can stay afterwards when we take down the tree. Um, and then, um, and, but the star will stay up for all of Epiphany because we follow the star. So we're going to sing This Little Light of Mine. That's an angel. There's an angel talking. That's true. Really you remember the song, This Little Light of Mine? All right, so let's sing that for you guys. I think there's three different verses for it. All right? Psalm 103. 
The Lord works vindictive and justice for all who are oppressed. Oh, vindication, sorry. The, war, the Lord works vindication and justice for all those who are oppressed. And he made known his way to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For he knows how we were made. He remembers that we are dust. Word of God, word of life. chapter. Again, Jesus began to teach beside the lake, and such a very large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat on the lake and sat there, while the whole crowd was beside the lake on the land. He began to teach them many things in parables, and in his teaching he said to them, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell in the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil, and it sprang up quickly since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Other seed fell into good soil and brought forth grain growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he said, let anyone with ears to hear, listen, the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So as I've mentioned before, I love to read. I have way too many books, more than I can read in a lifetime. Um, and there's particular kinds of books that I like to read. I, I tend to read a lot of mysteries for the most part. Michael didn't like anything that was fantasy or fiction, I think, at all. He wanted something that he could learn something. So we have some, I still have some history books on my, on my shelves as well. So if anyone's interested in really thick books about <laughs> Roosevelt and the like, I'll read some of those. Those tend to be ones I'll listen to on tape more than not. Uh, and then there's some books that I return to often year after year. I remember one of my favorites as growing up was the little, uh, the little uh, House on the Prairie books for English Wilder. Uh, one of my good friends from growing up was actually related to her, so I thought that was always really cool. Um, but I sometimes would still read those again as an adult. For instance, when I lived outside of Buffalo, we know about Buffalo right now, it's a little snowy out there. I, that was when usually in the winter there, I would read The Long Winter, which is where the would be snowed in and snow would be coming through the cracks in the roof and the like. So it made any snow that I was having to deal with there not quite as bad as those frontier games. Sometimes we read books for entertainment, other times to learn something, sometimes just for a distraction, if nothing else. Jesus knew that. Jesus knew the importance of story, that we're more apt to remember a story than we are his teachings. Now, there's some teachings that are pretty catchy, you know, don't put your lamp under a bushel of light, uh, and that's later here in this chapter. But stories stick with us. In fact, some of them become a part of our daily lexicon. I can say the Good Samaritan, and we immediately think to that story of the man that was left for dead on the road, and the man, others who passed by, and then finally that one who came and took care of him. Or maybe the story of the prodigal son, the one who spends all of his inheritance and yet comes back 
in confession and is received back by his father. And even today's parable is one that is more familiar. There's actually a whole series of them. Originally, the reading was much longer, like almost the whole chapter, and it was just a little too much. So I do encourage you to read the rest of the chapter because there's more parables, like the mustard seed is another one and, and, and some others like that. But I just to focus here on this one because the story of planting, of Jesus saying to those who were gathered, those to hear him, you know, like what you, when you go out to plant seeds, right? For many amongst them, there were gardeners. Now, this is the Middle East, and so many of the places were not a lot of water there. And so you needed to be very careful in where you planted your seed and to make sure that it could be nurtured and, and could grow the best it could. So I can almost imagine those who are hearing this parable about this farmer who just kind of throws the seeds out there. They're like, this guy does not know anything about gardening. Well, he is a carpenter's son, after all. He wouldn't know much about gardening, would he? And even the story, the familiar stories like the Good Samaritan, for instance, we hear it as a good thing, paired with that word. But in Jesus' day, Samaritans were not good at all, at least from the Jewish perspective. So sometimes these stories become so familiar to us that we can lose sight of what Jesus' intent was. Often, with his parables, he wanted to shock people. He wanted to wake them up. Like even that, another parable, the story about how a, a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one goes missing, and he goes and leaves the 99 behind and goes looking for the one. What kind of shepherd is that? Even the others at risk cut your losses. But what the parables tell us is not only just so much shocking as what does it tell us about God? The story of the shepherd tells us that God will not let even one be lost. The story of the Good Samaritan says that God comes to those and can work through all those, even those Samaritans. And what kind of farmer is God? The creator of the heavens and the earth, the one who made the seeds? Come on, God. Plant it carefully, right? Dig a little hole, make sure it's watered enough. It's the best soil that you can or provide nutrients for it. No, this farmer just tosses it all out there. Now, often when we hear this story, in fact, Jesus kind of goes on and, and does an explanation. I don't really always like when they do these explanations of the parables and says it's about those of how they receive the word. And it is about that, that we can think about what kind of soil we are or what, it, what kind of soil we are and what else is in our life, right? That sometimes there's those worries and those things that choke us out, like the thorns and the brambles do. Sometimes our ground has gotten pretty hard, maybe a little cynical at times. It can't receive much. Other times, it's sort of like that path the birds come, things come and carry it away. But as soon as we leave our time of worship, as soon as we leave our time of prayer, that it's gone. Right? Kind of like my memory days, like walk into a room, what was I going to do? Right? That our thought, a reminder of who God is, kind of just goes out until the next time. We lose sight of who God is. And so, yes, it is about the kind of soil or about what is as a part of our soil. And even we hear that, we are reminded in the psalm that remember that you are dust. God remembers that we are created from the dust of the earth, that we are fragile, that we are human, that we are, well, as we'll hear on Ash Wednesday, we're dusty. But it is God's breath that gave us life. It is God's seed of love and grace that sustains us, that is with us always. God scatters that indiscriminately, not carefully. What kind of farmer is God? But God scatters God's seed wherever because we never know how it will be received. And then maybe sometimes some of those thorns and rebels can get pulled apart. I mean, how many times have we seen something grow in an impossible place? Like if they're like in concrete and the like, 
You see, you see it coming through despite all the hardships around it. It can still somehow sprout and grow. That even when it seems impossible. Now this weekend is Martin Luther King weekend. And one of the things that we remember about him is, first of all, it's a long time <laughs> since that all started. And it seems like, you know, we got it all together, right? Mar Martin Luther had that Martin Luther King had this dream of how things could be different, but he also talked about how the arc of history is long. And so sometimes those seeds that he planted and others planted, some of it has come to fruition. So he writes out other things, and still others haven't. Sometimes those seeds of justice, those seeds of love that have been planted, sometimes take a lot longer. Because there's just lots of things that come in the way. But it's planted nonetheless wasn't planted just by him, but by many others. But God's love continues to be planted today in our world, even in the midst of hardships and destruction, even in the midst of places where it seems like it will never grow. It's planted. Because that's the kind of God we have. God gives us those seeds of love and grace to be planted within our own bodies, but that we are called also to take those same seeds and scatter them indiscriminately. I'm saying we're going to do that in my gardens. Well, gardens is a very loose term. <laughs> to take any seeds I may have, just kind of throw them out there. I mean, I do have like little strawberry plants growing in the middle of my, my yard to so just kind of throw them at least in the flower bed so I don't mow them up. And just see what happens. See what happens. Because even with a seed, no matter where it's planted, we can't make it grow any faster than it will. But we can plant, we can plant it, we can even nourish it. But making it grow? Yeah. That's God's doing. That's God's spirit that breathed life into us. And God's spirit that continues to breathe life into the midst of others in the midst of this world, in the midst of even the hardships and destruction that we see all around the globe. So we come to hear God's stories, but also to be just surprised by them. To not just think about what does it say about me, it does that, but ultimately what does it tell us about who our God is, what kind of God we have, the God who did breathe life into us, but the God who also spreads God's love and grace out into the midst of the world. Because there are places where we think nothing will ever grow. But by God's grace, it can grow into something unbelievable. So as we are fed by God's word this day, may we go out and spread God's love and grace with the world. As for this that we do proclaim, Thanks be to God.
Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the good news of Jesus Christ, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. You describe the reign of God in ways people could understand. Help us and all who share your good news to find the right words to connect with others and inspire them to follow you. God, our teacher and our healer, your parables often touched on mysteries of nature, like the growth from a tiny seed. Let us be awed by the miraculous intricacies of your interconnected natural systems, that we might be committed to protect and preserve them for future generations. God, our teacher and healer, Till and keep the hearts of all our leaders, that they might be good soil in which your word of love, justice, and mercy might flourish through all they say and do. For the sake of all your beloved children and the world, we give thanks for the life and witness of Martin Luther King Jr., who invited us to see and work for your kingdom here on earth. God, our teacher and healer. And the mercy hear our prayer. You come to us in the midst of our challenges, holding us in our fears and our pain. Give strength to those who journey with illness or grief. We pray, we pause to pray, especially for those we name now aloud or in our hearts. We lift up in prayer Pamela, Karen, Marianne, Jane, Arlene, Thomas, Shannon, Megan, Ed, and Steve, and for those who have no one to name them, and for those who do not know Christ's name. God, our teacher and healer, we We pray for all those living in areas affected by war, extreme poverty, or natural disasters. Mobilize us to respond to those places in the greatest need of your peace and healing. God, our teacher and healer. With gratitude, we lift up, we, we uplift all the saints who have gone before us, whose faith, even as small as a mustard seed, bloomed into great shrubs in which our own faith was fed and nurtured. We give thanks this day for those who have officially joined the membership of this congregation, particularly Susan, Barbara, Kathleen, Lauren and George, Adelina, Gavin and Jake, Christina, Matt, Grayson and Asher, and Julie. God, our teacher and healer, in, in mercy hear our prayer. Your other petitions may be offered silently, aloud, or online in the comments. We lift up all those who are hospitalized or who are going through treatments, particularly Dorothy and Chris and Mackenzie. Surround them with your healing presence. We also remember and give thanks this day for the life of Patricia McCloskey. Thanks for her 100 years of life and ask you to surround her family with your peace. 
confident that in Christ Jesus you answer prayer, we lift you all for whom we pray, aloud or in our hearts, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Amen. And also with you. We share God's sign of God's grace with one another. Peace. Peace, like we, we can't believe. Peace, Bill. Peace, peace. You may be seated as we continue with our offering.
still more in the beginning of you. We pray that you would return to you out of our abundance, that we might use our gifts for the flourishing of all that we have made. Amen.
this opportunity for folks to share their mission and ministry announcements. I'd ask if any have any they'd like to share this morning. Sure. Yes, I mean. <laughs> The shelter has been pretty full uh, this year, so that we will be asking people to cook for 16 people, and I'll be sending out reminders to those people who have signed up for the different uh, places. And our week starts on Monday the 22nd, so a week from this coming Monday. Um, we do um, officially welcome a number of people who've been worshiping with us for quite a while. Um, so I'm making, officially making them numbers, uh, so I, but I have certificates and stuff for them. So, so I would invite, so there's a couple that couldn't be here. Uh, Sue Curtis often comes Thursday, and Barbara Deshawn is usually in our choir. Um, but I invite for Kathleen Harvester. And up here, Lauren Johnson and George Zhang. Their kids are technically already members. Actually, Lauren used to be a member, but you guys can all come forward. The kids are members because they've been baptized here. Lauren was a member, but it's reinstated, I guess you'd say. <laughs> um, Matthew and Christina Turi. I'm assuming Christina's working today, right? She often works on a Sunday. And their sons, uh, Grayson and Asher, are in Sunday school. And then Julie Werbrick. There she is. And there will be a special coffee hour for, for them following worship. Um, please do take the opportunity to uh, officially welcome them. And so we just welcome them with a applause right now. So said they've been, many of them worshiping with us for a while and um, Pastor finally got around to like making this official for them. Uh, there still are a few poinsettias. Please paint the poinsettias. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted them again, but I don't want to water them. Also, I just want to tell you that the flower chart is over on the entrance to Fellowship Hall on the wall, and there's a lot of openings for January and February. So if you, you know, sort it out. Flowers. It's thirty dollars if it's one person, fifteen if there's two, and you can even do three. I don't care. So, anyways, but just you know, leave your phone numbers too. But please take the point status, even if you didn't pay for one. Just just put them outside. <laughs> That's what I do with mine. <laughs> um, tomorrow is also Martin Luther King Day, and there is a community event if you would like to participate. Uh, it's starting in the ShopRite Plaza with a caravan and then going to Casa Severe's, um Church, which is over on Old Horse Pound Road in Kent, off of Route 52 near Ludingtonville Road. Um, so if you are able to come, please come to that. Um, also, our annual meeting is in two weeks from today. That happened, right? Um, and so the annual reports will be available um, next Sunday. That's the plan. So, uh, so they know they will be here next Sunday, whether they're all full or not. Any other announcements? Seeing none, I invite you to stand as we conclude our worship together with God's blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be good to you. May the Lord fill you with peace, love, and much laughter. May he set you free to celebrate the life that God has given you in all its fullness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. There's some folks who can stay and help undecorate and get your goodies and come back. Um, I think boxes still have to be brought upstairs or something. But, uh, but you can do that. Christmas is officially over now. So, uh, But let us join in our final. Mm -hmm. 